Joining me now on the show tonight is the youngest founding member of Sister Sledge. Formed in 1971 alongside Debbie, Joni and Kim, they have five UK top ten, spent 77 weeks in the top 40 here in the UK. It is, of course, Kathy Sledge. So, Kathy, how are you? Great speaking to you. I'm great. I'm really good. I'm excited to be coming through, <laughs> through the UK. So, yeah. And the UK has been really good to you, Sister Sledge, over the years, no doubt. You've had quite a bit of success in the UK in the past, haven't you? I have. I really have. And there's this huge resurgence going on that it's really exciting. And so, yeah, so I'm hyped. You say a resurgence. It's not just you. It's not just you and Sister Sledge. So many mm-hmm. bands from your era are in mm-hmm. huge demand all over the world now. And I don't know what, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know if, if you can explain what it's, what it, what's it going on. I think, you know, I have this theory that, you know, everything comes full circle again, especially if it's, if it's like, they say the cream always rises to the top. And I think, I think there's some really great music from the era, the dance music era that I am from, as well as uh, I think some music just has, longevity and you have to remember it's new to a whole new generation so if it's good it's gonna work exactly i mean any, anytime it's nile rogers and bernard edwards it's just classic it's uh, just good stuff you uh, know? absolutely absolutely i'm gonna get to that in a minute but i'm gonna take you way back you were born and raised in philly right yes now philadelphia yep. to yep. me is like a bedrock of, I mean, so I don't mm-hmm. think a show goes by when I don't play a Philly production of some sort or somebody from Philly on my show. Can you give us yep. an, an idea of what it was like being raised in Philly musically? Well, you know, um, I know with my sisters, we always, like any other like kids, we would just listen to the radio and, and we would harmonise and we would learn the songs, not just the Philly songs, but certainly the influence of Philadelphia the whole Gamble and Huff sound. Um, we actually did audition for Gamble and Huff when we were kids, but we, we were told we were too young, which, you know, was a compliment. But still, we got a chance to to be a part of the Philly sound just from being growing up in Philadelphia. So I'm very proud of that, and I think it's it has staying power that will be here for generations to come. Over here in the UK, Mama mm-hmm. never told me. Was, yes. was it was a hit for you? Was it probably your first hit in the UK here? It was. It was. And it was interesting because I was 13 when I sang it. And um, we, we were actually just auditioning when we sang that song because the producers, um, songwriters, Phil Hurt, who, of course, wrote a lot of the Spinners hits, and Tony Bell was Tom Bell's brother. They, they were a very strong team together. And they were actually trying to get a production deal with the record company and they used us to sing the songs and we ended up getting a record deal and of course who knew that the record would go to number one in uh in your country or at least the top of the charts yeah so it was all like starting to but this this happened and the rest is like we never looked back <laughs> mama show me When I hear that song, I think of an era of the Jackson 5, I Want You Back. I think of, yeah. even the Osmonds did One Bad Apple and um, One Ads, <laughs> One Ads, Honeycomb. You know, there was, that, there was that innocent sound of young people singing joyously. And that's when I first ever heard you sing as a youngster. And years later, I'm going to embarrass you. And this is why you might remember me, okay. <laughs> because I once said to you, you were my first crush. <laughs> it was the braces. Oh, I know now. Now I am blushing. The braces. It was the oh braces, honestly. I Because, you know, when you look at Top of the Pops, you did Top of the Pops. You remember doing Top of the Pops. Yes. And you see a young girl with braces. You think, I can identify with that person. And that was it. <laughs> it was really strange. Oh, uh, that makes me feel good because I was always embarrassed with my braces. I used to keep my microphone, like, right in front of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that must but have been now- tricky, yeah. It was tricky, <laughs> but you know that makes me feel good. I'm blushing. Um, the braces were like uh, I always say, Mama never told me it was like my Jackson Five career, <laughs> because it was like they used to say we're like the answer to the Jackson Five, and um, I always felt like I've got braces and I've got to cover them. But I I always feel good about the fact that I do. I hear this sometimes that 
the fact that I had braces, you know, for especially the young kids that had them too, mm. it made them a little more comfortable. Exactly. No, true. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely, you know how insecure kids can be? Yeah, About I was one. <laughs> wearing glasses, having braces, yeah. just just think. And to see someone who's a pop star with braces was just like seismic for me. You know, it's like, wow. You know, wow. silly, silly, but it's memorable, right? It is memorable. I get it a lot sometimes, believe it or not. I get, yeah. Actually, now in retrospect, it makes me feel good. I didn't, I had no real, I had no idea yeah, that no. I was leaving it, an impression. <laughs> you were. And, you know, even now I look back at your shots with the group, you know, and you're sitting there keeping your mouth closed and conscious. Yeah. I, I know I know all those things because we all we all did yeah. that. So it's, it's, it's just, it was brilliant. That's what I that's what really made me identify with you so much and so that. But moving on, I mean, honestly, Sister Sledge's mm-hmm. music gets played literally every week around the world, right, on radio all the time. And that iconic album you did with Edwards and, and Rogers, I yeah. mean, I don't know if you felt at the time this was absolute magic happening here, will this ever happen again? Because it was one of those moments, wasn't it? I got to tell you, you know, I what I remember most is uh, is the recording session. The first words that come to mind working with Bernard, the late Bernard Edwards, and of course, Nile Rogers, was um, trust, trust. You know, they would always say, just trust me, they trust. And because I was, again, this like goofy little kid with braces running around asking a million questions like, do you think they're ever going to even play this record? And they go, they laugh at me and go, yeah, it's going to be a huge hit. And I would say, yeah, how do you know that, though? Like, why is water wet? I would ask stupid questions like that, you know? But um, they had patience uh, with me as a kid, and I listened to them completely of what they wanted, like being the lead singer. Ironically, I was never allowed to hear any of those songs until it was time to record them. Uh, like Greatest Dancer literally was recorded line for line. Wow. Like, like one night in a disco, okay, cut. And the next line is on the outskirts of Frisco. And I had never recorded like that, but I get it. Like I, I understood it. And I always, even as a young kid recording, I would always look at producers as if they were like a movie director, because the director has a vision of what the end game mm-hmm. is going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. So the producers, musically, and so I would just go, okay, yeah. But they, they, <laughs> were, it, they were super yeah. producers, I mean super producers, right? I literally just heard not so long ago that Niall did an interview and he referenced me as his... Dion Warwick, what Dion Warwick was to Burt Bacharach, and I was that blew me away. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, I was like, I never thought of it that way, but it was very special, special. It was, as fans, it was honestly, it was, it, it was something incredibly special, and I think that the appeal of that particular album, We Are Family, was that yep. it appealed to youngsters and adults alike. You know, there was something mm-hmm. sophisticated about it, about all those. I mean, I think of tunes like Easier to Love. And I remember melting as a young teen <laughs> listening to that song, you know, thinking of you. Yeah. And then the parents were yeah. getting away off on We Are Family and Greatest Start. You know, it was just something for everybody on that record. It really was. And, you know, and now to see it come back full circle, especially thinking of you here in the United States, thinking of you as having this huge resurgence. So much so that now I'm, I've been writing with Jam and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis were recreating the chic sound and Niall has talked about coming on board and it's very exciting because I think um, again you can never bring back a song like your family and I always wonder like I never would want to re-record it it's been remixed so many times I just I just read that it had at least 31 million streams alone and then with all of the records I've done with my sisters we I think I had 100 million streams and I'm thinking you know these are things that are timeless, and I think you can't top that stuff. And why would you? You can just keep doing what you love and hope that it even it lights a candle to what you've done. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because um, a lot of people think of things differently, and they always want to top what they did, but sometimes magic happened, and that was magic, you know? It, you know, I'm seeing what thinking of you is doing, and let me show this, this generation that weren't really as familiar with Sledge 
like what we brought to the piece, which was really, we were the first girl band to ever dance full on. I mean, before us, it was maybe the Supremes and yeah. Three Degrees and the Bell, but we kind of broke the barriers for the for the Spice Girls and the In Vogue's and the TLC. That's true. Destiny's we, Child. Yeah. 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 Oh, like, yeah. In fact, when we won in the Millennium, we, we were awarded the fifth top girl group. And Destiny's Child did the speech, and that's what they say. We were the girl group that broke those barriers to open up dance. And that's where we are. And so I feel like there's this whole new audience that needs to know that. So it's so exciting what I've done. I'm very excited about the fact that, you know, doing things like opening with Lost in Music and seeing the silhouettes of these but, you know, which is to me symbolizes Sister Sledge and mm -hmm. what we are. And it's been a lot of fun and the reaction has been crazy. And I'm really hyped about doing um, some touring that's coming up in your country. Yep, I know. And I'm going to give you a shout out to the festivals you're performing <laughs> at after this interview. It's been fantastic catching up with you. I'm so glad you're, you're, you're reinvigorated and your music will never die. You take care. Thank you. Same to you.